Hi. All right, real quick before this video starts, um, watch this one first. Even if you're not a beginner, like I put in the title and I said multiple times in the video, there's still a lot of very useful information that you can gain from that video because a lot of people aren't beginners, but their designs still aren't that good. So uh, watch that video. Okay, thank you. All right, if you're finally caught up, um, one more thing, join my Discord server. Link in the pinned comment below, but it's also in my about page. There's a lot of people there, including myself, who will help you out with your LEGO Beyblade designs, give you feedback and tips and other such things. Okay, so with that out of the way, um, let's talk about LEGO Bays now. So this first thing isn't really advanced, but it's something that you guys won't stop reminding me about in the comments. Uh, tape. How do you tape LEGO Beyblades? Well, it's pretty simple. So let's say you have a contact point, you know, just something like this. It won't obviously look like that, but this is just an example. So you want to grab your tape. I use this uh, scotch tape. This purple kind right here is clear, so it won't look terrible on the base. But you want to grab a small piece like that, put it on the contact point, and fold it, and then attach it to the bracket. That's it. That's all you do. For more slanted contact points, such as this slope here, then you can take an even thinner piece, like this, as thin as around this area on the slope. Cat hair not included. Get out of here. Get out. All right, cool. Just put it onto there, and then again, fold it over, attach it to the bracket. Boom. Oh, but I'm already hearing you typing. What if there's studs on the contact points? Do I do the same there? No, because that kind of changes the surface of this, and you don't want to do that. What you want to do is, again, grab some tape. I am wasting so much of this stuff today. And then instead of putting it on like this, you want to put it on at the sides, so it'll grip to the sides of it instead. And again, fold it over like that. And if you want to, you can take an even thinner piece like that, and then you can reinforce the back of it. So slap it on, and then it sort of hooks onto this part right there. So um, yeah, boom, there's your tape. All done. That's the tape tutorial. Uh, thanks for watching. No, I'm kidding, there's more. But there's some other kinds of taping things that we can do with other types of bays. We'll get into these later. All right, let's move on to the next part where we're gonna be talking about unique LEGO Beyblade bases. We all know the four x four bracket, right? Well, you know what I say to this? that. Experiment with these bases right here. They are very easy to use, and they're the most accessible out of the unique bases, I would say. Let's begin with the 2x4 bracket, as this is probably the easiest one to build. As the name implies, get a 2x4 plate, then get some 1x4 brackets, put some on here, and put some on here. Fun fact, um, Lawrence asked us one time how to build this, which I find pretty funny. But here you have the 2x4 bracket, and alternatively, depending on what kind of thing you're building, you can replace those brackets with uh, 1x2 brackets, just like this. Um, I've used this once before on Dragon, but I usually use um, these, like I've used them on my Hyperion and Gaia. So obviously when you're building on this base, you would just put the contact points on here as normal, but you, for these intersections, you wouldn't do something like that, because that looks dumb. You see, what a lot of people do, which I don't think is bad, but I also don't recommend, is they'll take some 1x4s and they'll wedge them into here just like that. Now, while this works, when you do this on both sides, it's only a little different than any old 4x4 bracket. It's just these sides are a little bit shorter. And um, as you get into the rest of the video, the microphone's gonna start to sound like this. I don't know why, it just happened, I'm sorry. I'm not re-recording this video, so... Uh... Yeah, I uh, hope it doesn't bug you guys too much. So I recommend at the very most having one 4x4 on each of these sides. This is present on many of my 2x4 bracket bays. For my Hyperion, you can see that it has these parts right here that sort of resemble a 1x4 build. For my Gaia, it obviously has these um, headlight bricks right here that kind of interrupt it, but it still kind of acts like it. And then for Dragon, it doesn't really act like it at all because there's this slope here. And with these gaps, you can do a bunch of new and interesting things and use a bunch of pieces that you couldn't use in different ways before, or at least not as seamless. For instance, again, with Hyperion, there's a jumper here to get this contact point offset. You can't do that on a normal 4x4 bracket. For Dragon, like, I don't even know what's going on here, man. You got, like, this slope that leads into this thing. 
It's, there's a lot going on here. And then Guy's implementation of it isn't the craziest thing, but I have this piece on here and it doesn't look really stupid because if I were to put this on a four x four bracket, it would look like a tumor, but it looks pretty neat on here. So yeah, this base is very, very versatile. So I highly recommend using it. I'd say it works best for oval-like attack base. So Hyperion, Dragon, Joker, all that. Anyway, let's move on from that and move on to the next base. Now this one doesn't really have a standard name. It's not like it's a four by one by one by two by one by one by four by one by one by two by one by one bracket. That's stupid. I call this the H bracket. Guess why? Because it's shaped like an H, yeah. So how is this thing built? Well, pretty easily. We've got these one by four brackets right here with these L-shaped corner plates with a one by one bracket right there. You wanna create two of those and put them at the sides, then create two halves of that, and then connect them together with some one by two brackets, and there you go. Each bracket has been built. I've used this on my Lego Wizard Arrow so we can get these points right here extend out further, but these little gaps can also house some gimmicks. For instance, I've built a working Ragnarok gimmick with this base, but uh, I haven't reviewed this guy yet, so um, I'm just gonna leave that there for the rest of the video. Anyway, so yeah, building on this thing isn't too different from building stuff on a 4x4 bracket. I'd say it's like in the middle of a 4x4 and a 2x4, but you can get some pretty cool shapes out of this. Like I also made this horror suit design that I don't know if I'll release, but I made it. That's about it for the H bracket. Pretty useful and very cool. So now let's move on to some goofier stuff. Triangles. Whenever I see people build a Lego bay that's supposed to be three-sided but isn't, I, I just, I don't like it when they say, oh, but it's so hard to do that. I made the most accessible three-bladed base. Use it. I'm just kidding. You don't have to, but I mean, I do recommend it because this thing is pretty sick. There's a couple different ways you can build this, and the method I'm going to show you is the gear method. You want to take these one by two plates with a clip and these one by two plates with a bar, connect them together, and then you can place some studs at the ends of each side. A totally optional thing you can do is actually take another stud and wedge it in between here. This just gives it a little bit more weight and covers up these gaps. Unsurprisingly, you're gonna wanna create three of these and you're gonna take some one by four. This is the only point in time where one by fours under contact points are accessible. And you basically just wanna connect them together like this so you can get that triangle-like shape. Now that you have something like this, we're gonna put that off to the side and work on the core. The core is pretty simple. You wanna take a two by two circle, a four by four circle, then an axle with a gear right here. And this gear has 12 spikes on it. Then just put it into here. And then I don't know how I discovered this, but this gear perfectly slides in between these studs and it's a little bit shaky, but it's not too bad. And then you would put your contact points and your designs on here and everything like that. But there are some practical considerations with this guy. When you're building your bay and you're putting your contact points on here, don't make the contact points less than two plates. I would say three or more is good. And no, that doesn't mean shove an extra one by four under here so it's big enough. That's not what I mean at all. But when you have stuff like this on all three sides, it's no bigger than a four by four bracket with like these kinds of things on here. It's a lot smaller. And that's kind of a bit of a drawback when making three-bladed Beyblades. They're usually pretty light and pretty small. But hey, at least it's accessible, and there's a lot of different ways you can build this thing. For starters, with my drawn sword, it has a different center design that isn't like the gear method. We have this triple axle piece wedged in between these one-by-one -one brackets with uh, slopes. I'm pretty sure that if you use like normal one-by-one -one plates, it might work the same. And it's very sturdy, and the center piece isn't a separate part. And I've also seen this method created by a very small channel called Arrow. It's like a little rubber tire wedged in between some one by two plates. And I actually kind of like that method, not because it uses tires, I'm not really a fan of that, but because it means that the bottoms of these parts are more reinforced if you use a one by two. He didn't use a one by two plate in that example, but I'm pretty sure you could use it if you want. But yeah, it reinforces the back of these, which is another kind of problem with them there very fragile. And of course, a lot of people don't like the center core, but to that I say, shut up. Because here's the thing, right? Three-bladed designs will always have downsides, no matter which way you slice it. For most of Lego Bay's three-bladed designs, like his Belial, his Grey Valkyrie, and his Fafnir, they are basically fused with whatever disc or chassis they have. I mean, I know that his Belial has a separate disc, but I mean like pure Lego discs. 
And these are compatible with pretty much any axle connection. So, you know, you can take like my chassis. Oh, you can take my chassis, for example, that have a circle and then a two by two underneath. And then you can just plug it in and then boom, it works. That, that looks stupid. And yeah, you can see what I mean by with these kinds of contacts, like they're really small. But the point is, his bays aren't compatible with any kind of middle parts, so I went for compatibility while kind of sacrificing design, but honestly, it works. But there's another way to make these things, and we're gonna bring in the stamina version. I don't have a separate one built for this video. But I used it on my night shield, and I'm gonna use it for a Fafnir design as well later on, so if you wanna see how to build this base, you can go into my how to build Wizard Arrow night shield video to check it out. But the abridged version is a um, triangle with these hinges and these one by one clip pieces held together by one by three plates, the same triple axle hub as my drawn sword, and with these bushings right here that are clamped down by the hinges. This makes it a lot easier to make rounder designs as when you make a circle on something like this, it looks a little bit weird. And yeah, obviously, it's gonna be a little bit more fragile than the attack version, which was the version with the 1x4 contact points that I was looking at earlier. So that's why I do recommend taping them up. And you would tape these things as normal, just, you know, taking a piece, taking it off, and then just doing like this, and then folding it down onto these hinge pieces like that. But something that I recommend doing almost even more with these bays is by taking a piece and then basically putting it over here where these two hinge points meet. So this point is a lot more secure. You can see that present on both my knight shield and as well as my drawn sword. So yeah, while this thing has its flaws and this thing has probably a little bit more, they are very accessible and I highly recommend messing around with them because they are a lot of fun. Now you might be thinking, oh yay, you finally went over your stupid bases after like two years of the system being out. That means this video's done, right? No. See all these bases, all these bases that I just went over 12 minutes ago? Well, forget them. Now I am joking partially when I say that because those bases are great to really dip your toes into unique designs. And even when you're more skilled, they're still very useful. But once you get comfortable with building with those bay blades, you wanna start building bays a little bit differently, or at least, you know, I recommend doing it because you can get some pretty cool shapes. Stop building bay blades around a base. This is something that the LEGO Beyblade community has been, you know, centered around for ever, basically. But it's almost better to build the base around the bay blade. Let me explain. I feel like I said that too much in this video. These bays right here have bases that aren't shared amongst any other Beyblades. Longinus kinda does, it's like sort of a 2x3 and a 2x3 connected together. We call this the S bracket, but it's still a bit proprietary when compared to things like the H and 2x4 bracket. Kingdom Curvius has a very unique shape with these sort of squishy blades. And Helios and Lucifer are, of course, you know, five and six bladed. It's not that you can't make other designs with these bases, well, more specifically these three, but they just won't be as good or clean. So I say to kind of limit the amount of bases that you share amongst other Beyblades. Now, a lot of my newer bays that I've built do kind of follow this, but I haven't actually revealed them yet. But I still want good examples for this point that I'm making, so I'm gonna show them for one second. Yay! But an even better example of having no shared bases and making them all very different from each other is none other than Sho. He's an active member in the LEGO Beyblade Discord servers, another reason to join mine, link in the pinned comment or whatever. He makes Beyblades like this. As you can see, they're all different from them, they're all very unique, and the bases, which look like this, are also very different from each other. They're sort of like heavily modified versions of the 2x4 bracket, which I don't know where that thing went. But yeah, anyway, his designs are absolutely amazing. There's a video by Lego Bays where he built some of his designs. I guess I'll put that video in the description if you want to see it. Anyway, that should kind of be it for this video. I did try to keep it kind of short because I knew this would just become a yapathon if I didn't shut up sooner. And I know that there are still some subjects that I may have left out, like stud up and stud down, the differences between those guys. But all I have to say is stud down is life. Stud up is too annoying for me to recommend it. But yeah, that's about it. If there are any other tips that you have for other people, or if there are any other things that you'd like me to cover in like a part two or something, uh, leave it in the comments down below. Anyway, comment, like, subscribe, stuff like that, and I'll see you in the next video. I'm not gonna have fun cleaning this up. Oh, there's that 2x4 bracket. Anyway, um... <laughs>